In this video, we're going to make a thematic map with census data from the census website. The new fact finder now has the ability to actually display and map uh, the statistical data that they collect on people, places, the economy, so forth, and which gives a major cool tool that is pretty easy to use to make these kind of core plus maps. So what we're looking at here right now is what the final product would look like, a core plus map with some kind of information and you can see here that thematic this is a thematic map of the unemployment rate uh, with uh, of people population 16 and over and um, a core plus map basically is a thematic map where areas are shaded or patterned in proportion to the measurement of statistical variable so right now you can see here the unemployment rate where it's the lowest is going to be a yellowish color um, and you can see the colors go up in gradation um, for higher unemployment where you can see Puerto Rico is having the highest unemployment. So how do we make this map? So this is something that's very cool to do. You go to factsfinder.census.gov. This is the American Fact Finder web page. Um, the first thing you want to do is try to avoid the guided searches or the community facts. Um, these kind of tools here are, are kind of limited and they don't really get you what you want. But if you go to advanced search, you can go and you can actually interact with all the census data. So whenever you click on advanced search, it pretty much brings up the entire United States census, um, all our digital records. And what you're doing here um, is that you're filtering through the uh, information that the census has based on different criteria. Um, I would also avoid typing things into these kind of term boxes. They don't usually work out as well as actually using these click buttons, uh, click uh, filters here. So for example, what I'm interested in is mapping out the unemployment rate by state. So the first thing that you should do is choose your geographic scale of your map. So if I click on here, you have options for geography. Um, and if you uh, look on this drop down menu, you can see that there's the United States region. This is going to be the actual scale of your data set. So if you're looking for each state to have a particular stat associated with it, you're going to have to choose the state scale. If you were looking to make county maps, um, which each county having a statistical uh, uh, stat associated with it, you choose the county maps. So let's choose our scale. I'm working with state on this in this case, so I click state. And then it's going to give me the options to select particular states. And so if I wanted, for example, I could select just two by holding down the control click button. But that's not what I want to do. I want to actually map all the United States, all states within the United States and Puerto Rico. And what this is going to do is going to create a table with whatever topic I filter later at the state level giving a row for each state with all the statistics associated with it. So I add that to my filter. Once I do that, um, you start seeing the, the census starts filtering out through their millions of records. And you can see here that there's already 44,769 tables that the census has that uh, looks at various topics at the state level with statistics associated with it. So you can see here we have uh, population counts, but this is going to go through all different types of topics. And so let's look at the topics that are available in our filter. And so what I'm interested in, in mapping is the unemployment uh, rate. So if I click here on people, which is the first uh, topic, you can see here it breaks it down to all different types. Um, for example, here's relationships. It's going to be whether people are married or a family or so forth. You have things like insurance coverage even. Um, there's all different types of information that's available from the, from the United States Census. It's really amazing how much information they have about the American population. And so if you click on the employment uh, option, you can see here that they have employment status, labor force. There's also different types of things, even part-time, full-time work status. So you can actually, uh, even occupation, you can actually go and map 
a lot of different cool things. But we're going to look at just typical unemployment rate. So if I click on employment status, it's going to add that into my selections on my filter. And now you can see that there's 3,795 tables with that information. What's cool now is that FactFinder is starting to suggest go to reports, the best report that you should use with this little star. And you can see here they're telling you to use this one, which is a 2013 American Community Day Survey five-year estimate. But um, you can see that if you scroll down here, you're going to have all types of, of tables that might have some kind of employment status. It might be broken uh, up by gender. It might be broken up by earnings. Um, and then also you have different years. So for example, I can go to 2000 and see what the unemployment rate was for this country that in 2000, 2005, 6, 7, all the way to 13. Um, I'm going to go with the suggested one of employment status. So what you want to do is click on whatever table is interesting to you. And what the fact finder is going to do is it's going to quickly show you the table. So you can see here, this is what the table looks like. We have Alabama and uh, as the first uh, state in alphabetical order. And it has information here um, in the labor force, employed, unemployment rate, and then total population counts. And so like here, for example, you don't just get a, you know one stat. They give you all different kinds of stats. They have it broken down by race. They have it broken down by sex. They have it broken down by different population, educational attainment. And so you can actually really look at the unemployment rate in a lot of different ways. So here, for example, in Alabama, one interesting thing is is that its typical unemployment is 8.7 percent, so about 9 percent in 2013. But if you look at it broken down by education, if you have less than high school, so you don't have a high school degree, you have an almost 19 percent unemployment rate. Once you get that high school degree, the populations that have high school degrees get about a 10 percent, so that's a huge improvement. And then, you know, some college or an associate's degree is going to drop that down to 8.2 percent and then by the time you get a bachelor's degree or higher you have a four percent unemployment rate that trend you can see a lot in a lot of different states um, let's see what's going on here in Alaska for example you have seven percent overall you know 14 for the high school less than high school 11 for high school seven for some college and then 2.7 percent for bachelor's degrees you see that drop going down um, it's, it's a pretty amazing um, pattern that you see through through all the states. Um, um, so anyways, if you go here, we can map out one of these stats. So the, the one limitation with the mapping of the census is that you only map one statistic at a time. Um, it will go through every single uh, state and map it, but you have to choose one of them. And so if you click on this Create a Map button, what it's going to do is it's going to make all these into hyperlinks. And so if you click onto one of them, it's going to map that particular stat for all the different states. So for example, here we have the typical, the, no, the unemployment rate of 16 and, uh, 16 and over. And you can see here it's at 10.8%. If I click on that 10.8%, it's going to actually map out the unemployment rate for Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, all the way down. Um, it's just going to take that same number, 10.8, 8.8, so forth. If I was interested in, for example, unemployment rate of people who have Hispanic origins, then I can click on here, and it's going to map unemployment rate for people who have Hispanic origins for all the different states. But I'm going to just go with the general unemployment rate for populations 16 and over. I click on that. It's going to say, is that the one that you want to do? You say yes, and you say show map. And what that's going to do is going to generate the map. So you can see here, it's starting to generate the map. It's a core pleth map. <coughs> and remember, a core pleth map is showing information on a gradation. And it's all based off of a web server. So you can actually um, click on here, and it should change it a little bit. Let's see what happens. And so some things that you should think about when you're working with core pleth maps is the way you're breaking down the colors and the numbers of classes. Typically, you don't want to have too many classes because it becomes hard to distinguish with, with, uh, with your eye. Um, so for example, the gradations will be too hard to choose if you go above seven classes. So you can see here, they max it out at seven. Um, also for uh, people's short-term memory, you only store about seven different things in your head at any given time. 
And so you don't want to have to people to have to keep on going back to the legend over and over and over to remember which color is which. Um, but you can see here there's also different color choices that you can do. Um, a lot of times unemployment rate or things that are economic might have the green color because of it seems like it has something to do with money. Um, but you can choose whichever color uh, you want. So, and then also the, the classing method. There is uh, natural breaks, equal interval, quantile, and then of course the user defined. The natural breaks is also known as jinx. Uh, jinx. It's, uh, it's a method that's designed to look at uh, data clustering and it tries to determine the best arrangement of values for different classes. What it tries to do is minimize uh, each average deviation for each class mean to make the different classes uh, and so it tries to reduce variances within each class so it's trying to find these what natural grouping patterns and so you can see here um, it, what it results in sometimes though are these kind of weird numbers like 3.3 percent to 5.8 percent uh, 6.8 percent to 8 point so some of the numbers are kind of like you know strange uh, there's other options like equal interval um, option here and just click on that and see what it looks like and what that's going to do it's going to make the legend have equal intervals so you can see here it's like threes 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 there's always three but what that ends up doing you can see here it starts masking some of the variation that exists because the when you choose these these breaks you're saying everything between six percent and nine percent for example are exactly the same it all becomes the same color um, then there's the quantile method, which is going to take uh, regular intervals from the from an inverse uh, function of the cumulative uh, distribution of the random variable. It it's, it's, sounds complicated, but um, basically you can see here is that it's it's breaking up the numbers, um, making the biggest class at the bottom, and it gets uh, a little bit smaller, and so the variations are a little bit different. It does sh show a different distribution completely. So depending on which classing method you have, you're going to have totally different maps. So now we're going to say, oh, look, the South is having such a higher unemployment rate than here, than the you know the heartland with all the, the fracking, for example, going on. That's why they're having great unemployment. Or Texas, you know, California is having higher unemployment. But that's just because we're looking at the quantile. If we look at the natural breaks, we get a different story. If we do user-defined, and put different numbers, uh, our own numbers there, we can pretty much make whatever story we want. And that's that's one of the problems with the core pleth map. It's a lot like how to lie with statistics. Um, you can lie with maps very easily, either by doing geometric distortions or graphic generalization distortions, which we're seeing here is the graphic one. So you want to tell the story as best as you can to the truth. Remember that you're trying to do a representation of what's happening in the world. So you want to try to make that representation as good as possible. You don't want to try to advance some kind of agenda, for example. So you're going to try, you should try and play around with these different numbers of classes, different colors, different classing methods to try to find out what's the best, the best one. There's also different options here. For example, the, the you can change the colors of the map markers or you can uh, you know add locations in here or you can add different kinds of uh, features for example if you want to put in um, like roads or so forth onto the map so it's, it's a pretty cool web GIS system but once you know uh, once you have your your map created you know the best way you the best way that you would like it um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, change the color maybe let's go with that dark green color, kind of like that, and um, jump up the breaks to seven, and I'm going to go with the natural, and I change the transparency down to 30%, <clears throat> and so that's going to go with the base map, it's an adaptomatic map over it, um, but once you are happy with your map, you can just, you can actually print it, so you can click on print, um, you can give it a map title, I'm going to say uh, 2013 unemployment rate 
choose the standard paper size. I'm going to go with the landscape orientation. I hit OK. Um, since it's going to build my file for me. So every once in a while the fact finder does this. It will just show up and say unexpected error occurred while trying to download. <clears throat> um, I don't know why it does that, but <clears throat> if you just redo it, a lot of times it works the second or third time. You just keep trying it. It's maybe some kind of timeout thing from their server. Uh, pretty frustrating, takes a long time, but or there's other ways to do it too, so if this is like uh, freezing up on you, there's a second way, either you can click on the print button here, try it from over here instead. Uh, third way is if you click on download, um, there's an option here to choose pr uh, presentation ready formats, uh, PDF or JPEGs for example. Um, maybe JPEG might make it go faster, you can try that out and the unexpected error happens. Um, let's try that again. Well now it looks like it's being stuck here. And maybe it worked. Let's see. So opening up the PDF and it's not what I wanted. Well, <laughs> okay. Let's try this again. Um, print PDF version of the map. Okay. And let's see if this works. Well, I don't know if this is going to work for me. It may work for you. Um, put in the comments if it does work for you. Um, but another alternative you can always do is uh, do a uh, snip with the snipping tool. And um, if you go and launch the snipping tool from your uh, start menu. If you're in Word, you can do this kind of a screenshot. At least gets you something. So, <clears throat> uh, theory, you should be able just to hit print and it shows up as a PDF. For some reason, it's not working for me, um, but it should work for you. But if it doesn't work for you, uh, I guess, you know, we just have to wait for the census to get all their bugs fixed. But it is a pretty cool feature that the census is offering. And uh, let's see what happens as they improve it over time.